Howdy. We're going to be looking at Titania now. The Fairy Queen herself. I've got uh, several builds to do with her. And I think I'm going to do them in separate videos rather than another half an hour video like I did with Equinox and Hildren. Because those don't seem to do as well, which is understandable, because sitting through half an hour of a video, is it's asking a lot nowadays. So, today we're going to be going over <laughs> the funny one. This is Titania without Razorwing. We subsumed it off. She has no fairy form. Titania lost her wings. That's probably going to be the title, because it sounds funny. So... The main thing here is, like I've said I, I, in a previous video before, is when I play a frame, I want there to be a point, right? That you have to have some sort of use for the frame that is on some level unique that isn't going to be just completely outdone directly by another frame. Even if they're worse than another frame, they can still at least do something that another frame doesn't do, or at least not in the same way. And I think that's still possible in this build without having her four active. It also makes energy a lot easier to manage because we're not always going to be, you know, in Razor Wing. So, this is the build here. As you can see, I'm not going to go over Satanya's abilities. I'm just going to assume you know how she works. We've got Brief Respite Catalyzing Shields and because we are going to need to shield gate. We're not going to have the insane evasion chance from our four and be super tiny with a small hitbox. Though we can still get evasion chance from tribute, which is nice, right? Having enemies have a 50% less chance to hit us, we can also get the 50% DR from thorns, so that's not as valuable. Overall, though, that will still help a lot with our survivability as long as you keep dust up. Also, we still have spellbind, right? That's going to give us status immunity, which is super nice. Not very many frames have that. We can also use it to send groups of enemies into the air. With Spellbound Harvest, we give ourselves energy back. It also is a great crowd control ability, actually. Then we have Lantern. Lantern is also an amazing crowd control ability because this, similar to Decoy, works as an aggro value, right? It's sort of like a taunt, meaning it will actually affect Eximus, or at least it should. Sometimes it doesn't because it can be funky, but we will show it. Now, let me see... Oh, I got. Oh, I already got rid of those guys. All right, we're gonna spawn these. Um, is there? Oh, I gotta kill these guys. I was like, is there a reason I can't spawn anymore? All right, so we're gonna spawn Tony Xmas. Make ourselves invincible. Unpause the enemies. Now you are going to need to take their overguard down, I believe, before you can cast a lantern on an enemy. Yeah, see, it doesn't work. So you have to take the guy's overguard down if you want to cast it on an Xmas themselves. But now we cast it on the Eximus, and as you can see, there's only one or two of them shooting at me in this massive group. They're attacking the guy over there, which is very nice. I mean, we're still getting destroyed. We would be getting destroyed by all the Eximus abilities, but you're not usually going to have 20 Eximus grouped up together, right? So most of the time... That'll help a lot for survivability because it's going to aggro Xmas towards that rather than you. And on top of that, it's going to make them take more damage with an augment that we have. So wait a second, I actually want to come back here and pause them. Kill again and stimulate. Alright, so going back to our build. Beguiling Lantern. Attracted enemies take 100% more weapon damage. And that is... Um, its own kind of damage buff or debuff, technically, right? So it's multiplicative. I know the word multiplicative really gets some Warframe players going. When they hear that word, they're like, ooh, yeah. makes them real happy. So, you know, multiplicative. Probably made a few guys come there. So this is quite nice, and it scales with strength. So right now, 213%. So Enemies that are attracted by the Lantern are going to be taking more than triple the weapon damage, which is very effective, very nice. The attract radius is 29 meters, which is not bad. You can build more into if you wanted, but I don't think you need to, just stretches enough. So crowd control makes the enemies take more damage, just very nice. Then we have Breach Surge. Breach Surge is, well, I mean, most people know it's pretty busted. It's amazing, right? It blinds the enemies, it puts this radiation of proc on them usually, and then if you shoot them, that instance of damage is spread to other enemies. Now, something that is important about Breach Surge is that whatever hits, like the hits after 
when you apply it is what sends out the bonus damage, right? So it determines the damage multiplier of the breach surge little bolt. So it doesn't work well with weapons that um, don't do big damage in a shot or like shotguns, for example, right? Because I was trying Exergis earlier and Exergis does not work so well here because it's shooting a bunch of pellets, but only the first pellet that hits actually is going to affect the breach surge damage. So a big damage weapon works better, such as like a bow or something. But it's still going to be fairly decent regardless of what you do. Especially because it blinds enemies. It's just very nice. So we have lots of crowd control, complete status immunity, sending enemies up, attracting them, making them take more damage, and then making them spread the damage with breach surge. So a lot of crowd control in damage crowd control type damage stuff in this kit. Got Molt Augmented, Blind Rage for Strength, Arcane Energize and Equilibrium for Energy. I, you don't actually need Energize or Equilibrium technically here, as long as you're careful with Spellbound Harvest. So this makes it so if you hit at least four enemies with Spellbind, you get 50 energy back, and that scales with Strength. So we actually get 107, which will go up even more from Molt Augmented. And then you also get another 40% ability range on your next cast. Power Drift is just for more strength here. Something that is important while using Spellbound Harvest is that you actually cannot cast it on an enemy that's already affected by Spellbound Harvest. Or Spellbind, I mean. So if I cast on this enemy, and then I cast it on these guys, we're just going to cast on all of them so they're all affected, right? Now we're going to be far enough away that way I need to pick up all of this energy so I don't accidentally pick it up. All right, there we go. See, so they're all affected. So if I cast Spellbind, I should gain energy back and still be at max, right? Oh, actually, you can't even cast it on them. Oh, I'm using the wrong ability. I'm stupid. Hang on a second. Let's try that again. So I cast it. Cast it. Cast it again. Alright, now if I were to cast it on another enemy, you can see my energy should have still been full because it would consume it and then give it back for every enemy tagged. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. It only counts as enemies tagged that aren't already affected by spell lines. So you can't just spam it on one group and have infinite energy. You have to hit new enemies with it. That's not that big of a deal, because really, you are gonna you should kill the enemies after you spellbind them. But it can be annoying sometimes. She has her passive that lets you heal yourself and allies when you cast abilities, but that's just okay. Now, we're obviously lacking armor strip in this build, which is why I have two green corrosive shards. That way, we can use a weapon with corrosive to be able to full armor strip. Like, dual toxicist as a damaging weapon or you can use a primer like compressa or you can go corrosive on furris there's a lot of options lots of options and because we aren't forced into razor wing we can actually use a pet here so if you wanted to you could slap on say where is it panzer volpophila why is it sorted by name there we go panzer volpophila that way you're spreading viral so then you don't have to worry about not having viral on, say, like Furus, if you used Furus and Karnon. You could go first with corrosive heat and the viral be coming from Pans of Obophila. And you should have fairly little trouble surviving with your abilities. I mean, casting Breach Surge gives you your full shields back. Casting Lantern gives your full shields back. Casting Tribute gives most of your shields back, and same for Spellbind. If you have Augur Mods on your pistol, you should actually be able to get, like, two Augur Mods, you should be able to get all of your shields back then. Actually, let me think. Ah, uh, yeah, one Augur Mod almost gives you your full shields back. So, plenty of survivability in this. I think it's a funny, interesting way to play Titania. Like, if you like how Titania looks, you like her other abilities, but you don't want to be in Razorwing because it's actually kind of annoying at times, then this is a viable way of playing her. Somebody did mention in a video, the video I did on Le Loki's decoy augments, the new one that came out, they said something about trying it with Lancer. And I did try that out. It unfortunately did not work like I was hoping it would. So Lantern aggros enemies 
but a lot of the times they don't attack the, the Lancer enemy. They usually just look at it rather than shooting it. So if you have an enemy that's lantern and decoyed, yeah, it's going to make it so the decoy doesn't die because the lantern makes the enemy invulnerable, so it fixes that problem of the augments. But they're not really going to attack the enemy. It does increase the aggro value, so it pulls enemies in even more effectively, but you don't really need the extra little bit of aggro, in my opinion. And it only works if you would cast in a specific order, right? I think it's you have to cast decoy first and then lantern for it to actually work with the decoy to spread effects when it is attacked but again overall i don't think it's really worth it you don't have to use breach surge here there's plenty of other options like if you wanted more energy and viral on your weapons you could go nourish uh that's i think that's a more boring option though but if you want to that is an option like roar any sort of damage buff eclipse um I'm trying to think. There was another ability that I thought was really interesting, but I can't remember what it was for the life of me. What was it? I don't remember. Hang on a second. Well, actually, just because we can, I'm going to leave the simulacrum now and go to the helmet so we can look, right? You get to see with me. That way, I get to, like, you know, give a little bit more info on other options you could have if you wanted to do Titania like this specifically. So, Airburst wouldn't be a bad option. Ah, Chivrinka Pillar. That, I thought that would be a really interesting option, because then it slows enemies down, radiates them, and they're being pulled in by Lantern all at the same time. I think Chivrinka Pillar, if I didn't go with the Breach Surge, Chivrinka Pillar would be my next option, without a doubt, because it's a very, very good augment. And Snare is okay. I mean, I guess you could... If you can ensnare an enemy that is affected by Lancern, that would actually be pretty strong. Though I'm not actually sure if that is possible. So, hang on, you know, we might as well try that. Sorry if the video gets longer than you like, but I think it's nice to get more information. More information is always nice to have. So we might as well try and snare, though... That is going to cost me more materials, which is unfortunate because I don't have an extra build on my um my Titania, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and put Ensnare on her 4, and then see if it works with Lance. And, but yeah, Chirinka Pillar would be a great option if you're going all in on like just using stuff you can go higher duration and energizing munitions. That's not a bad option. Bloom is always nice. Larva? Nah, I don't think... Mark for Death could be very decent, I think. I would like Mark for Death here. Silence would be amazing crowd control on top of all the insane crowd control you already have with pulling enemies in and then sending them to the air with Spellbind. That would actually be a very nice option. This is a juicy build that is extremely comfortable, in my opinion. I'm going to be doing two more one or two more to tiny i think i'll do just one more actually to show off my other two builds which are typical razor wing dex pixia builds but this this video will stick to just me showing off titania without her razor wing ability i'm really curious now actually if ensnare works with uh lantern because i feel like that would be really really strong so we're gonna do this we have to test it in different orders. First, we'll ensnare. And then we'll lance it. Okay. It appears that it does, in fact, work. And enemies that come into the radius of ensnare should be pulled in again, I believe, right? Alright, so now the question is, does it work if you cast it the other way around? I mean, it doesn't really matter, because it's not hard to just do four and snare and then lantern but it is nice information yes it does okay wow lantern and snare i think that would actually be stupidly strong because now the enemies are going to take more than triple the weapon damage and they're pulled in and you won't accidentally kill your ensnare target that is insanely good right so now let's say we use gas here oh oh things are about to get really really crispy Gas build. They're all pulled in. So we are going to Lancer and that guy. 
is snare that guy. Then we have to go into our Karnon form. And now we spread all the gas. <laughs> These are armored enemies. I mean, this is anything new for ensnare and gas. It's always been strong. But now you don't have to worry about killing the guy that's pulling enemies in. It should just continually pull enemies in when they enter the radius. And again, it's going to make them take bonus damage. So actually, you know what? I think ensnare is better than breach surge here. See, isn't that fun? We got to learn that together. Bit of a live lesson. So yeah, that's the build. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. We're going to show off the fashion real quick in case anyone wants to see it. It's basically just a slight color change on the um, whatever this is called. Her deluxe skin. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. So yeah, uh, maybe leave a like on the video and subscribe if you want to see more random stuff like this. And watch out for the next Titania video. I don't know if I'll release it at the same time as this one or if I'll wait a day. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. If you didn't like the video, then leave a dislike. Because, you know, this is a bit of a heresy when it comes to Titania. Adios.